All right, Miss Vallejo, it's you and I here this afternoon. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to record. Um, all right, here we go. Good afternoon, everyone. It's Miss Luan Singh and Miss Viejo is joining us this afternoon. Uh, this is day two of Student Mental Health week in the month of May, which is Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, so today is our second presentation for this week. And today we're talking about understanding and managing our emotions, uh, which is building upon a little bit of what we talked about yesterday. Um, so again, this, this video, this is recorded, this presentation is recorded. Um, all the presentations this week are recorded and they'll be available on suhaicounseling.com for you to view uh, when convenient for you. So uh, just a little bit of background about your school counselors here at Sweetwater. So there are eight of us here at Sweetwater High. We focus on three different areas. We focus on academics, which obviously are your classes that you're taking. We wanna make sure that you're doing well academically and that you meet all of your requirements in order to graduate uh, from high school and to earn your requirements for uh, the university, if that's something you're, you're interested in doing. Uh, we're also here to help figure out, help you figure out what you're gonna do after high school. So college and career development is another part of what we do. Uh, we visit your classes every year to give you a lesson on uh, choosing your career, choosing a college or a training program or an apprenticeship or a line of work that might be a best fit for you. Um, and third, the third area that your counselors focus on are your social and emotional development. Um, talking about your feelings and your emotions um, because depending on how you're doing emotionally and how you're doing mentally will definitely lends a hand to how you function every day. And if you're feeling well emotionally, then you can you can deal with the things that you deal with every day as most especially to do well at school. And so that's um, important to us. And so this week we're fo focusing on student mental health. And um, yeah, let's move on. So yeah. We're focusing on social emotional development this week for Student Mental Health Week. So just some group norms. I know it's just Ms. Vallejo and I here, but anytime we meet uh, together, uh, we want to make sure that we're respectful of each other's feelings, respectful of what we share, um, and that we're good listeners. Um, so today, what we're focusing on is the difference between thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. So yesterday, we did talk about feelings and emotions and how those manifest themselves physically in our physical bodies. Uh, we'll identify how thoughts and emotions can impact uh, choices that you make. Uh, we'll identify strategies for making positive behavior choices. And we're going to understand how empathy impacts everyday relationships. So we'll talk a little bit about empathy today as well. So social emotional includes mental health. So just as we talked about yesterday, what is mental health? That's the state of your mental and emotional well-being. Uh, we talked yesterday about your physical health, uh, which goes hand in hand with your mental health. So you're a healthy body and a healthy mind equals a happy human. And that's uh, what we hope for all of you as your school counselors. And so we'll move on to this idea of a cognitive triangle. So your thought process, cognitive is how, you're, how, you, how you think, how you put thoughts together. Um, and that is done through feelings and behaviors. So you have these thoughts, thoughts manifest themselves into feelings, feelings manifest themselves into behaviors and vice versa and all together. So these are all hand, hand in hand. And so it's important that we're able to identify when we're thinking a certain way and how those thoughts manifest themselves into how we feel our feelings and emotions and how that manifests itself into how we behave the actions we take and the choices that we make 
all of things all of these things go hand in hand so it's important that we don't think of them separately that we think of them as um, things that we need to consider equally and all together and in considering our mental health so when we're thinking about this cognitive triangle and your thoughts and your feelings and your behavior sometimes those negative thoughts uh, overtake um, our minds. And so sometimes things get frustrating, things get hard, and we tell ourselves, I can't do this, this is too hard, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Um, and then that manifests itself, manifests in itself into you feeling maybe inadequate or not enough, maybe even embarrassed. So you start having these feelings of not being good enough, uh, feelings of being embarrassed. Um, and then you act out. So you stop going to class, you stop doing your work, you stop interacting with your teachers, you, you stop going to class. Um, and then that becomes this kind of domino effect when it comes to school. Uh, you can even put this example into maybe sports that we play or maybe a musical instrument that we've tried to, to play or maybe even a relationship that you might have with somebody. Um, these thoughts, Thoughts become feelings, feelings become behaviors, and then the behavior lends itself to thoughts and it kind of just snowballs like that. So it's important that we recognize when we start having negative thoughts because those negative thoughts lead to negative feelings and negative behaviors. And I have this, this wheel actually on my wall here in my office. And when I have students come in and they're feeling, they're having the feelings, um, and sometimes it's hard to really put those feelings into words. And so sometimes I just have the students kind of look at this, this wheel that's on my wall and point to where it is, where, where they're feeling. So what you'll want to do is kind of start on the inside of this wheel to help you identify how you're feeling. And that's like your primary emotion, your primary feeling. So the inside of that wheel. So are you sad? joyful, powerful, scared, mad, or peaceful. So that's like the, uh, the biggest piece of the pie here. They're bigger pieces, right? So you pick there. So let's say I'm feeling peaceful. So I'm green. We talked about colors and feelings and stuff yesterday too. So if I'm feeling peaceful, I'm gonna move up to the next step there. So not only am I peaceful, I'm feeling content, okay? And I move to that next level after content, I'm feeling relaxed. And so that allows me to put my feelings and how, what, what's going on inside of my heart and in my mind into words. And so this, this uh, feelings wheel is very helpful when you're trying to identify what you're feeling at the moment, whether you're mad or you're angry or you're scared, you're frustrated, um, this kind of helps you narrow down exactly how you're feeling. So um, that's important to be able to put words to how it is that you're feeling. Um, empathy is the ability to understand and share feelings of somebody else. Um, so sometimes you might be in the presence of a friend or a, a, a teacher or your mom or your dad, your brother or sister, and they're not actually, they're, they're acting kind of funny, they're acting different, they're not their usual self. And um, having empathy is being able to understand the feelings that that other person is feeling. And that's really important when it comes to mental health too, uh, that you're able to identify with the people that you surround yourself self with and being able to sh understand and share some of the feelings that they're having. So I'm gonna show this little video and then we'll talk a little bit more about it.
Okay, so the, at the end of the video, it asks you a, a very important question. If you knew those things that, you know, the little captions, if you normally don't know those things about people as you interact with people on a daily basis, but um, would you interact with people differently if you knew those things? were happening in those people's lives. Uh, notice they show teachers, they show staff members, they show students. Um, so I'll I'll ask Mrs. Casas and Ms. Vallejo um, to maybe just share some insight about what did we observe in this video? Or what are some of the things we experience in our everyday um, when it comes to that those those types of occurrences and how that affects how we interact with people on a daily basis. Hi, um, thank you for inviting us, Ms. Ms. Luan Singh. So, you know, as you watch the video, I mean, there's a lot of sadness that goes along with it, you know, and, and just, just being able to observe and watch other people's nonverbal communication can actually help out a lot. I mean, people a lot of times say, well, they didn't say anything or they didn't ask for help, you know, and that's what we're referring to as like verbal, like you're actually speaking up. But a lot of times we just need to watch for those, those times where people kind of talk to you through their body movements, you know, and, and that, that, that says a lot. And I think many times that even gives you more of a cue than their actual speaking words. Um, so that's one thing I observed about the video. Yeah, totally. 
And that can go for any of us in our everyday. Like we kind of talked about your friends, your family, you know, people you interact with every day and they're not acting like their usual selves. And you, they might not use words, but you can totally see it in the way that they carry themselves. You can see it in their body language that something's definitely bothering them. And that's part of empathy is you being able to identify some of those things in people that you care about and just asking them like, hey, you know, is everything okay? How are you doing today? um you know something going on you want to talk about it uh, because even just asking those types of questions goes a long way for some people you know it shows that they matter it shows that somebody cares about them it shows that um that you're attentive that they're not their usual self and that you care and that that's real important um, okay um so uh creating empathy so like we mentioned um, it's important that we're kind of attentive to what 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 is going on around us. You know, we talk about mental health, we talk about self care a lot, uh, but a lot of mental health is how we interact with those people around us. Um, you know, we're we're a community, and so we need to uh, pay attention to those that, that we care about and provide help and assistance, or even just a, a, an open ear to listen um, them sometimes. And um, this quote here says. Our similarities bring us to a common ground. Our differences allow us to be fascinated by each other. So oftentimes it's easy um, to kind of think that you know somebody and that you have things in common, um, but some there, there are lots of times where there are some different things that we're going through and we didn't know like, oh, I didn't know that guy was going through that or, oh, I didn't know that happened to her. And um, oftentimes when we find those things out about each other, it kind of brings us closer it allows us to have that empathy and to feel for other people and to appreciate other people's strength in difficult um, times. Um, so that's empathy. So just talking a little bit more about those emotions, this page has got lots of um, words on it, uh, but it kind of gives you a little bit more detail into those feelings <coughs> listed on this chart. You know, some of us like this chart because it's simple, it's easy um, to, to, to follow, right? But some of us sometimes need a little bit more words, uh, need a little bit more of a description, a little bit more of assistance on how to put words to how it is that we're feeling. Um, so sometimes um, a lot of us experience frustration. So I'll use that as an example right here in the middle of this chart here, frustration. So what, what types of thoughts lead to being frustrated? Thoughts that life is not meeting your expectations and that things should be different. So when you have a particular idea in your mind about how something is supposed to work out or how something's supposed to go or uh, how something's supposed to be and it doesn't work out that way it can cause you to become frustrated uh, a lot of the times for students you know you think you're doing well in your classes you think you're doing all the work you think you're turning everything in you think you're studying and doing everything that you're supposed to be doing but then your grade is not what you expect it to be and that causes a lot of frustration um, and so we need to be able to identify those feelings and think about what is what is it that we can do to to help ourselves in a situation like that. Um, yesterday we talked about physical feelings and how your your feelings can sometimes uh, manifest itself physically in your body. Like some of us clench our fists when we're upset, or we have all this tension in our shoulders, or we clench our teeth and our, our jaws, or we scrunch our foreheads a lot. Like for me, I have these lines on my forehead and it's because I'm always like this. And I permanently grown lines in my forehead because of that. And that comes from sometimes being frustrated. And my stress, my stress comes out here and I've noticed that. Um, so um, these feelings don't always have to be negative. And so the bottom chart here will tell you like, how can some of these negative feelings be useful? Okay, so anger, anger can motivate you, uh, can help you communicate how you're feeling to other people, okay? Sadness can show us what's really important and uh, help show others that you need help. That's, you know, like a cry for help almost, right? Um, 
Um, anxiety, when you're feeling anxiety, can alert us of danger or problems, can prepare our body to better cope with, with stress and things that might be threatening, can save us time in getting us to act in important situations. Um, guilt can help us recognize when our behavior isn't in line with other people's values, can motivate us to maybe change our behavior to something more positive, um, can even help us maintain social connections. So even though some of these emotions may have a negative connotation, there can be a way that some of these feelings can be useful to help us improve our mental health. So other, some things you can do to regulate your emotions. We talked a little bit about this yesterday. Um, there's a list of things here that you can do to um, distract yourself from these feelings that you might be having that might not be as desirable and you wanna distract yourself, take your mind somewhere else to not think about some of those things that are, are upsetting um, to you. Um, so there's a whole list of things here. Um, in the presentation yesterday, one of the uh, young ladies was saying that these uh, ac these self care activities are not one size fits all. So they don't work for everybody. So maybe somebody might like yoga, okay? Or maybe somebody hates yoga. Maybe somebody loves to draw. I don't like to draw, so I, I wouldn't do that. Um, I shared yesterday that uh, we've done um, like close your eyes and breathe type of relaxing uh, activities uh, in the counseling center. And um, some people don't like to close their eyes when doing some of those breathing activities. <clears throat> but instead of closing their eyes, they'll choose something in the room to focus on. Like I have this little happy face sticker emoji on my wall right there. And instead of closing my eyes, I would probably just focus on that happy face sticker while I do my breathing activities. So when it comes to some of these calming activities or self-care activities, you wanna try and find something that fits for you. And just cause it works for one person doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna work for you. So it's important that you practice some of these things and figure out what works best for you. Um, and you wanna always remember you're not alone. Your school counselors are here. Um, and just because you're assigned a particular Counselor doesn't mean that's who you have to talk to. So you're, you're, as you all probably know, you're assigned a counselor based on your last name, but you don't necessarily have to talk to that person when it comes to social emotional things that you wanna talk to. We want you to talk to whatever counselor or whatever trusted adult on campus that you feel comfortable with. So it's important for us that you have a trusted adult on campus that you feel comfortable talking to. So it doesn't necessarily have to be your assigned counselor. We want you to talk to any of us that you feel comfortable talking to. Um, and here are just some resources in the community. Uh, if your counselors or if the school's not open, your counselor isn't available, your teachers are not accessible and you need someone to talk to or you have a friend or a family member that you're not quite sure how you can help them and you need help. Um, these are phone numbers that you can call. These are 24 hour phone numbers. So we've had some students uh, call these like in the middle of the night because they weren't doing well themselves. So, or they had a friend that was sharing some things with them and they weren't quite sure how to help their friends. So they jumped on these 800 numbers to get help for their friend. And we highly encourage you all to use these if you need to. And we found that uh, our students who've used these resources before have found them very useful. So we encourage you to use them um, if uh, school staff is not available at the time that you need it. Um, that's just who and what uh, some of the resources we use today. Um, but yes, that brings us to the end of our uh, presentation. Uh, we appreciate you watching our second video today. Uh, join us tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this week at 2.30, same link um, for additional mental health resources. So thank you to Mrs. Casas and Mrs. Vallejo Paez for joining us today. Have a nice day, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.